ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the Southeastern Conference. We hope they caffeinated in studio. We hope you caffeinated. College football on ESPN presented by Sonos from Oxford, Mississippi. Pac-12, no, SEC <laughs> after dark. Little brand change, Tulane taking on number 17 Ole Miss after a weather delay of almost two hours. A steady rain here in Oxford pretty much all day. We had lightning. Some of the fans here on Parents Weekend have stuck around hoping for some offensive pyrotechnics despite the weather. And good evening, good night, and Ishraf. Mike Golick Jr., Taylor McGregor is down on the field. We've got some football for you. Finally, we've got two great offenses. You heard Kevin just say both of these teams averaging better than 50 a game through the first two weeks. And in Ole Miss quarterback Matt Corral, we get to watch one of the best signal callers in college football. The SEC's leader in total offense, fourth in the nation, and a guy who, when you think about last year to this year, the real improvement has been in decision-making here. The way he orchestrates this offense, the clarity with which he sees the field, because Lane Kiffin's going to give you a lot, pre-snap, post-snap, in the decisions on that player at the speed that they want to play at. And Anish, so far, so great for this quarterback, who in a year, where we're looking around college football, wondering which of the big-time quarterbacks will step up, has a chance to maybe be one of those draft board risers as we go through the season. Now, we saw it with BYU's Zach Wilson last year. We saw it with LSU's Joe Burrow in the year before. Corral had a couple of games last year where he turned it over. He has been clean in that department so far in 2021. For Tulane, a charter member of the SEC, throw adversity at them, why not? It has been their new normal this season. You think about what happened their first game against Oklahoma. The game moved from New Orleans to Norman because of Hurricane Ida. They have been living in Birmingham for almost three weeks using Alabama's practice facilities, using Legion Field to get their workouts and practice in. Adversity is nothing new. Nothing new, and that's got to be the message in the locker room during this is we've been through so much already. This delay is not going to be something that hampers our performance here. You talk to some of these coaches, it's felt like a perennial bowl game for them right now, and that brings you closer together. That focus when everything's changing around you brings you closer as a unit. They do get to go home tomorrow, and their next game will be in New Orleans against UAB. Field conditions could be an issue tonight. Taylor McGregor down on the field. Anish, you saw how hard that rain was coming down. I talked to some members of the Ole Miss grounds crew, and they said they did their best to try to drain the field. Really, the biggest thing they had to worry about was around the benches because that's where the artificial turf is. Now, if you look by where I'm standing right here, I'm pressing on the grass, and you can see the, the water coming up out of the grass. So we'll just see how this plays into the surface here tonight, guys. Yeah, will it slow down these offenses that have been unstoppable through two weeks? We know you've waited for a long time. So have we. Tulane's got the throwback SEC helmets with Greeny on there. Opening kickoff comes your way after this. From Vaughn Hemingway Stadium, it's the SEC on ESPN. Under the lights here in Oxford, a weather delay of close to two hours, and we're finally ready for football. Anish Roth, Mike Golick Jr., Taylor McGregor. The lane train is ready to roll on a Saturday night here in Oxford. Ole Miss will receive Tulane to kick off. The green wave pushed Oklahoma to the brink in week one and then dropped 69 on Morgan State last week. Nice. Ole Miss began the season with a Labor Day win against Louisville and then a blowout against Austin P a week ago. Casey Glover will kick it off. Jerry and Ely, one of the top all purpose players in college football, the deep man for the Rebels. The game's afoot. 
And a fair catch made by Ely. Ole Miss ball at the 25 as we take a look at tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. Yeah, we talked to you about the quarterback, Matt Corral, already. Here's some of the guys he's going to be trying to get the football to. You mentioned Jerry and Ely, dynamic all-purpose player. And Dontario Drummond, as this offense looked for Stedman to step up in the wake of Elijah Moore heading to the NFL, Drummond has been sensational so far, leading all of college football in receiving yards per game. And the opener against Louisville, nine catches, 177 yards. Ole Miss on first down has hit some big plays, averaging almost nine yards a play on first downs through two weeks. Corral out of the backfield, Braylon Sanders. You mentioned Drummond. Sanders was the guy they targeted going into the season to replace Elijah Moore's production. They said he popped during a lot of the scrimmages in preseason. But you can never tell how this offense is going to go. The ball will still find him. Nine yards on first down. Sends up a second and one. Corral slings it over the middle. Tipped incomplete. Wanted Drummond. And it's third and short. Now third down's been a bit of an issue for Ole Miss through a couple of games. Just seven of 23. And Lane Kiffin said they need to be better. First run of the game. And a first down carry by Ely to the 40-yard line, a gain of six. And you already saw the tempo of this offense having an effect. Players from Tulane running onto the field, trying to get set as the speed increases. Free play. Eric Hicks jumped. defense has been credited by Oklahoma and this Ole Miss coaching staff when they turned on the film for effort, tackling, and physicality. This group's led by Jeffrey Johnson, number 77 up front, who dropped almost 50 pounds in this last year. Fast and physical at the point of attack. And Johnson, a big-time recruit out of high school, Bama, LSU, all in on him. Had a medical condition, ended up at Tulane. As Ely picks up a yard and Chris Hampton, the Tulane defensive coordinator, who you saw a moment ago, said uh, they were a little out of their league when they were recruiting Johnson. Fortunate to get a player like that to anchor the defensive front. Corral hands it off again. Ely across midfield, a first down. Brought down by Darius Hodges. And Hodges slow to get up. Ole Miss is going to go quickly. Look at Chris Hampton back with Tulane. Ely cuts a jagged path to the 40-yard line, a gain of nine. And again, first down production has been so key for this offense. And for this offensive front, sorting through the trash right now, Tulane trying to throw a lot of twists, stunts, move this D-line around and confuse the offense. Ole Miss, the top rushing offense in the SEC last year. Hodges that time, the TFL. And it brings up third down from here. This is unquestionably four-down territory. Yeah, what we're going to see with both of these teams tonight is aggressive offensive coaching. Fourth down in play as soon as you cross the 50. No question in this spot here as Tulane runs off the field late. And they're running off slow. They have a chance to substitute when the offense does, giving the defense a little bit of a breather. Corral running for it, slides down. He slips up, and they're going to spot him close but he's going to be a little shy it's where he begins the slide is where you spot the ball fourth down not even a decision Henry Parrish into the game Parrish gets the call and powers across to the 36 for a first down Nick Anderson the leader of that two lane defense the tackle and Anise, that's where you can really pop big runs as you're getting up getting set on those situations where the defense has to be prepared reading the scouting report here Rebels now 8 out of 10 on fourth down this season. Corral's got time. Clean pocket. Finds a soft spot. It's Mingo. 17 yards. Little Mississippi Masala on this very first drive by Ole Miss.
On the ground, Parrish. Inside the 10, end zone, touchdown, Rebels. And a niche coming off of almost two hours of rain delay. The slick field conditions that we saw there, Matt Corral going down, all favor the offense right now. Moving this offense, extending it east and west, and then going north and south late in the drive. That defense, you saw, trying to get their feet underneath them and struggling against this speed. The true freshman, Caden Costa, hits the PAT. 11 plays, 75 yards, and it's Henry Parrish punctuating it with a TD. And can you see everyone inside the linebacker, Nick Anderson, waiting, trying to see when this running back skirts through into the open field. And if you are out of position for even a split second against the speed on this offense, Anish, it's going to look like six all night. Lane Kiffin, one of the best play callers in college football. Had this off offense humming last year. Problem last year was not scoring points. They played in a ton of games where they scored a lot. They also gave up a lot. And ultimately, Ole Miss's fate this year will depend on what kind of strides they make on the defensive side. They did bring in DJ Durkin, the former Maryland coach, former Michigan DC to run the defense as co-defensive coordinator. If you've seen Mar Ole Miss play in the past, I promise you the defense that you've seen out on the field through two weeks so far looks almost unrecognizable with how aggressive and fast they've played. Tulane brings it out to the 25. And we get a first look at the green wave offense led by quarterback Michael Pratt. When you watch him, the first thing that jumps out to you, his toughness. Willing to put his body on the line. And Anish is a former offensive lineman. It's the thing that's going to fire the rest of the team up the most. But then you see the arm talent that he has here. This is a young player with a lot of ability. And when you talk to his teammates, the coaches, a lot of swagger in the way that he leads this group going back to last year when he got his first start against Houston. He was homeschooled through eighth grade. Did not start playing football till he got to high school in ninth grade. And Cameron Carroll stood up after a gain of five yards. Carroll, a track star, runs for Tulane. Got a guy who can go 4-4 four, four in a 220 frame. He's a big body. He's an early and often target for Michael Pratt. Had a career high two touchdown receptions in that Oklahoma win. Tulane likes to use tempo as well. They may pump the brakes at times tonight, given what they know about Ole Miss's offense in an effort to keep the Rebels off the field. Pratt will throw. He was hit. And it's Sam Williams, who was a human tempest oh, last time out that. against Austin P. You talked about the fire on these offenses, the flames coming out of this man's hair through the first two <laughs> weeks of the season. If you've watched Ole Miss on defense, you have seen number seven in red raising holy heck in these backfields. He's part of what they want out of this defense. Lane Kiffin said, if our defense is going to succeed, the three down up front have to be in that backfield. Especially the edge guys who have to get to the quarterback. On third down, Pratt to throw. I'll try to run. Takes a big hit after a pickup of two. Fourth down. Now we told you he's tough. He bounced up quickly, but Tulane three and out. Those are also the hits as we go along in niche. When you're this offense, when you're chip along the coordinator, you're going to want to see him take less and less of here. He's still more valuable to you on the field. Adverse down and distance situation, live to punt. Ryan Wright will kick it away. And a fair catch made by Braylon Sanders inside his own 20. A 49-yard punt. Matt Corral will lead the Rebels back out on the field after this. 
If you are judged by the company you keep, and Tulane's Willie Fritz is in some pretty good company. He's taken the green wave to a school record three straight bowl games. Tulane 500 or better in three straight seasons. May not seem like a momentous accomplishment, but the last time Tulane did that, 1979 to 1981. It's been incredible, and this forward momentum for this program has continued into the season start. On the fly sweep. That's Jacor Pearson, a gain of seven. That goes down as a pass. I always hated that. Those should be rushing yards. Should Those be. should be ours. But it's not. Pearson again motions. Corral will tuck it and run. And a first down to the 31-yard line. Kevin Henry the stop, and that scares Tulane, the ability of Corral to use his feet. And the success this offense has had on early downs in these drives. The big, big way you've got to slow down tempo, splash plays early in the down. Get them off schedule. On the ground here on first down. And only a couple on that first drive, Junior. Ole Miss averaged 11 yards per play on first down. If you can't get an offense like this off schedule, and this team for Tulane, six TFLs versus OU, 10 versus Morgan State, they live in backfields and really need to tonight. Corral checks down. He's got Parrish. And Parrish showing off a little physicality, a gain of 14. Up to the 46-yard line, another first down for Ole Miss. You see it already taking heat off of these rushers up front. Number 41, Darius Hodges is part of a game, pulls out, he's eyeing the quarterback trying to find him as they hockey line change almost the entire defensive front. They want to platoon this defense, and so anytime Ole Miss subs, expect to see bodies flying to the field for Tulane. And expect Tulane to take its time. Parrish into the secondary, another big run, give him a dozen. He had the first touchdown of the game. And Anish, you're seeing the linebackers for Tulane spread all over the field trying to defend these receivers as the hurry up begins again. Yeah, there's Parrish again, a short gain. Four carries, 26 yards for the sophomore from Florida. And Anish, you see the defensive line down on a knee right now, getting ready for the next snap here. They're getting a rare breather as they have time to substitute here, but they're gonna be down ready for this call to come in all night might have a matchup in the slot instead they'll run it's Ely makes a man miss breaks a tackle and bulldozes his way for a gain of 17. Ole Miss is so good at finding a weakness and then exploiting it right now it's the run game right now it's the linebackers in the box here there's so much room as they're spread out trying to account for these receivers trying to account for this jet motion Corral will throw. Incomplete off the hands of Mingo. And Anish, credit to this Ole Miss offensive line right now. We've gotten blitzes, stunts thrown in the run in the past, and they've managed to corral it so far and give plenty of rooms for Ely, plenty of protection for Corral. Corral it? I, I see what you did there. Yeah, the pun was intended. I stand by it. Corral rolling to his right, throws on the run. And a sliding catch by Jonathan Mingo. Seven catches, 99 yards last time out. Big time recruit out of high school. He's one of their receivers they're hoping can break out this season. After the first down catch, Corral. And that's Dontario Drummond leading the SEC and receiving yards entering week three. That's the old school Denard Robinson RPO right. action that we see there, the true extension of the triple option. Drummond again, and his knee went to the ground, but he didn't catch it, incomplete. So now third down. I'd expect to see some sort of exotic from Tulane on defense. You've got him slowed down here. You're in the red zone where the windows are tightened up here, taking advantage and try and speed up the clock. Quarterback draw. Touchdown, Matt Corral.
And look from the back side here. We do send pressure, but watch 55 and zero. You're going to see two defenders end up in the same gap for Tulane. When you're dealing with an offense at this kind of speed and you get out of your gap assignments there, these athletes don't need your help. And that time, a mental mistake from Tulane on the pressure. Two drives, two touchdowns for Ole Miss. Costa's kick is no good. And as Ole Miss sits on a 13-0 lead here, Matt Corral showing off every aspect of his arsenal so far, giving them a commanding first quarter lead. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Sonos. Experience game-changing sound made easy. Tulane was a charter member of the SEC at inception in 1933. Left of the conference after the 65 season. Tulane actually played in the first Sugar Bowl in 1935 against unbeaten Temple. Who could forget that? And they've got the helmets today. Oh. The old SEC logo for Tulane was greeny. That's their mascot. And they had a decal with their three SEC championships. They have more SEC titles than Kentucky, Mississippi State, South Carolina, Vandy, and then Missouri, Arkansas, and Texas A&M, a few schools that joined the program fairly recently. So there is a bit of an SEC history with Tulane. And interestingly enough, they left the conference because uh, they wanted to play a little bit more of a national schedule, thought it would broaden the scope of uh, the football program. And uh, hindsight, of course, being 2020, you right? You know what? You make the best decision you can at the time. At the the time, important thing right? is we're getting great helmet stickers and an even better throwback <laughs> mascot. And now for this Tulane offense, they get to try and reset to start this drive for Michael Pratt. Let's see if he finds his tight end, Tyrick James, a great target for him. Oklahoma could not contain him. Incomplete, threw it into coverage. Intended for Deuce Watts. Keydron Smith got his hand on it. He's starting for Jake Springer. Starting strong safety for Ole Miss out today with a shoulder injury. Tight windows on a lot of these RPO throws right now. Ole Miss is playing off the ball. They're going to have to hand some of these runs off and make them pay. Well, they run it here. Carroll looking for room. Pratt tried to throw a block. Or rather, that was Pratt. It doesn't get very far, and it's third and long. And against this Ole Miss offense, two three and outs can be lethal. This is not a team that wants to major in drop back passing again. All eyes got to be on number seven, Sam Williams, on this Ole Miss defense. They've got to have a plan, as you see the tight end lined up to his side, to give their tackle, Joey Claybrook, some help. Williams, two sacks, two forced fumbles last week. Pressure coming. Pratt in trouble and throws it away. Fourth down. It was Smith, the safety, bringing the pressure. Back-to-back -back three and outs for Tulane. For Tulane right now on offense, this has been a team that's been erring on the side of passing on first down like we've seen. 12 of 17 first downs they passed on against Morgan State. 10 of 12 against Oklahoma. They've got to mix it up because clearly that's something that Ole Miss is keyed in on and is playing back on in these early down and distances against this offense. Chip Long is the new offensive coordinator for Tulane. Spent time with Brian Kelly at Notre Dame. What changed with Long's arrival? More tempo than normal. Ryan Wright to punt. Good kick. Chases Sanders back into fair catch made after a 49-yard punt. Two drives for Ole Miss. Two touchdowns. They get another go with 5.50 left in the first. Been a tough few weeks for the ACC. The chess match now moves into a different gear between Jeff Levy and Chris Hampton. Matt Corral will throw on first down. He'll check down. And Ely lowers his shoulder out of bounds. Flag is down. There is no foul for Hans to the face. Second down. 
Chris Hampton, the Tulane defensive coordinator, said Ole Miss, the first few drives, would try to probe and exploit a weakness. They have found one. So now you go from the Sicilian defense, I guess, to a different strategy if you're Tulane. You have to adjust. What did Ole Miss figure out? Well, Ole Miss stressed the edges and then decided to try and beat them up the middle. It's moved Tulane's linebackers out wide. Plenty of space in there. They're going to have to think about rolling an extra body down to try and guard these runs. Harris takes a big hit. The ball comes out, and Tulane's got it. Rudy Dyson covered it up. And we have our first turnover of the game. We talked about these linebackers being challenged. Watch number one, Nick Anderson put his head right through the football there. This group was playing back on their heels. The field conditions favored athletes in space. And so now on a cutback, you had a chance to lay a big hit. And that time couldn't have come up at a better option. Give your offense a short field where four downs are in play immediately. Uh, no doubt. Devin Brumfield in the backfield. Michael Pratt throwing downfield, and it's caught Fat Watts. A gain of 13, a first down for Tulane, and a red zone chance for the Green Wave. And you see the tempo for the Green Wave now. They understand the opportunity they've got to dish out some of this confusion. And down in the red zone, Anish, you know they love the eye candy. Shifts, motions, give the defense a lot to process. And oftentimes, that results in a leak out by the running back on a pass play. It worked for two touchdowns against Oklahoma. Pratt hit as he throws it, completes. And not much for Shea Wyatt. Division two transfer from Central Missouri. A D2 All-American two years ago. This is where I think the two tight ends can be such a threat for this offense here. You mentioned Chip Long, the coordinator, came from Notre Dame with plenty of that in his bag. Deadly down in this area of the field. Will Wallace in motion. On the delay, Brumfield. Got a good block there by Wallace. And a little extra effort, a first down and goal at the six yard line, a dozen on the play. This is the opportunity this Tulane offensive line has been looking for here. Sincere Hainsworth at center leading this group that is much better against the run. They want a chance to try and move these bodies around, especially down in this area of the field. Look for them to hammer it off this left side. Wallace again motions. The give is to Carroll. Stiff arm gets the edge. Angles in. Touchdown Tulane. You watch here on this play, Anish, the O-line and the tight end can only account for so much. The running back's responsible for a man, and that time, Cam Carroll reminds A.J. Finley that that was his gap on that play, and he got into the end zone. You always know you're going to have to account for one. Watching the pylon cam reaching out really over to make sure down. that ball crossed the plane. Yeah, so remember, the ball has to cross the plane, and in those instances when you're out of bounds in college, you only get goal line extended out of bounds if a part of your body is in the end zone before you cross. Yep, especially when you get near that pylon. As soon as you touch that pylon, you're out of bounds. So it's about where the ball is at that point as you get close yeah, here. The pylon is in the end zone but out of bounds. So again, it's hard to tell from that angle. So let's see if this one gives us something more definitive. Again, I'm, I'm not sure, Mike, I see anything to overturn that. You need, as you've heard a million times, indisputable video evidence. And you're going to watch his footsteps out of bounds, actually. That left foot comes right down there. out of bounds. And so it's going to be about where was the ball the minute that foot touches down out of bounds. Again, so close to call. And 44, Chance Campbell, the Maryland transfer, screens the ball there. It, it looks like... That ball isn't in. I'm not sure this angle is going to tell us much. Yeah, Anish, from what we've seen so far, again, left foot clearly out of bounds. It's about where the ball is. But with 44 in the way, we haven't seen conclusive video evidence yet that I think could overturn the call on the field because that's the, the standard of proof at this point. Right there. Again, I, I, the ball doesn't look like it's in. 
Yeah, rewind that a couple of frames. That might end up being the angle. After video review, the ruling is the runner stepped out of bounds with the ball at the one yard line, second down. And that was the one angle where you could see the pylon, you could see the goal line, you didn't see the ball or the nose of the ball when that foot went out of bounds. So the call is reversed. And a second and goal coming up. So now for Tulane, great opportunity here. We talked about the two tight end sets. You've seen them shift and move guys around here. Give your guys an opportunity. This is an Ole Miss defense that plays lighter. They're probably going to get an extra linebacker on the field now, but it's been a diet of six defensive backs, and you've got to win with big, skilled personnel in that tight end room where you have the advantage. Goal line formation. Carroll barges in for six. And Anish, we see this all over college football. You line up one of your defensive players at fullback in the backfield, give them a chance to dis out the pain. Here's number 46, Jojo Dorsius, lining up in that fullback slot. And you get this G boss on that side. You're going to pull the guard, try and create a seam, and then hammer the fullback in on a defensive back. Dorsius is a D lineman, a transfer from Memphis, but he was part of the goal line package at Memphis as well. PAT by Merrick Glover is good. Kevin Connors still awake, my friend. <laughs> well, the Seawolves at least walk away with some cash. Nothing wrong with Cash and Ish. We know what makes this whole thing run. Money is real. Whoever dies with the most toys wins. 3.40 to go first quarter. Turnover couldn't have come at a better time. Now you need complimentary football from this two-lane defense. You were able to hold them on early downs. Remember, again, force an incompletion, set them up in longer yardage, down in distances. Good things are going to happen for you. You saw the play disparity, and for Tulane, a breather for a defense. Successive three and outs, able to capitalize off the Ole Miss turnover. Casey Glover to kick off. Ely, the deep man for Ole Miss, took one back from 100 yards against LSU last year. We have a flag down. Offside, kicking team number six. Five yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the play. First down, Ole Miss. Week two, Monday Night Football takes us to Lambeau. Aaron Rodgers in the pack. Tough week one game against the Saints. They'll take on Jared Goff and the Lions. Got our friend Steve Levy and his beautiful voice. You also have Peyton Manning and Eli Manning on the ESPN2 broadcast, which was a hit. And Lane Kiffin wants those two to do the Tennessee Ole Miss game next month. That's too Manning, too furious, I believe, at this point. There's Drummond, a furious run all the way to the 48 yard line, give him 18 on the play. And Ely makes his way into two lane territory. Can't replay on Ole Miss. Nope, they're gonna beat you every time on here and that's what they've been doing to these linebackers. You're starting to see the adjustment from Nick Anderson, Marvin Moody. They gotta continue to stretch the field horizontally, does Ole Miss. Little misdirection to Drummond, and devoured in the backfield is Ely. Kevin Henry, the seventh-year senior, leading the charge. 
That'd be weird walking into the locker room at that point. What do you have in common with these 18-year-olds? But on that play, great penetration by the D-line up front. Again, a disruptive group lives on the other side of the ball for third and long now. Corral, quarterback draw. Got a block by Ely. He slides down at the 46-yard line, and I would assume Ole Miss will go for it here. And this is a call Jeff Levy knew after first down. They communicate this early, so he's got a play in mind for just this spot. Rebels 8 of 10 on fourth down this season. They've got a man on a flat. It's Drummond across to the 40-yard line for a first down with the second effort. Anish, this is what you got to do in this offense. Keep your eyes on where everyone is. Drummond's a great chess piece because he can line up in that tight end spot. He's a good enough blocker. And if all of a sudden you think he's not a pass threat, he leaks out the backside. Yeah, Tulane trying to get lined up, trying to get their subs off. And they substituted on offense, so they're allowed to take their time and match. Pressure coming off the edge. It's picked up. Corral's got time. Into double coverage, incomplete. No flag, he wanted Braylon Sanders. We mentioned off the top, Braylon Sanders was the guy that popped because he's the speed threat. And as a defensive coordinator, that's what you're always looking. You got two sets of eyes on him in the back end of this defense because nothing threatens you more than speed. Dontario Drummond's got a lot of production, but a lot of that has been because the eyes have been drawn to 13. Corral again to the air. Snoop Connor. And tracks his way across the 30-yard line for a first down. Give him 13, and that is his calling card. He runs like a hammerhead. And you saw no one run with him because, number one, Nick Anderson's eyes were right on Corral, away, afraid of that QB run again. The ruling of a first down on the previous play is under video review. Did Connor step out? Yeah, right there, but it looked like that was after he picked up the first down. Looked like it was well after here. You wonder if they're looking at any targeting on this play, because you see that drop crown of the helmet, that hit to the head and neck there, and that's Dorian Williams, who leads the team in tackles and tackles for loss so far. So in that case, remember, Connor is not a defenseless player. So the only way it's targeting is if you lead with the crown of your helmet, and that's what you're looking for. Does he try to lead with the shoulder? When you lower the head, that is an indicator, and that usually gets you tossed. Crown of the, crown of the helmet, the head and neck. You've seen the indicators here. And again, I yeah, missed that's, that's, that's going to be targeting. Led the team in tackles and tackles for loss last year, an incredibly important player on this defense. And when you see that head duck, and it's so tough, Anisha, for these defenders, it's a natural instinct. You're trying to hit with the helmet screws there, but this is what they want to take out of college football. And I hate seeing that a guy's day might end, but this is going to be targeting, and he's going to be done. Again, when it is not a defenseless player, which is the case here, it's got to be the crown of the helmet. I always point people back to Joey Bosa, his hit for Ohio State against Notre Dame in the 2015 After fiesta. video review, number two for Tulane is disqualified for targeting. The penalty is half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. The big topic of conversation around this rule has been, can we maybe legislate severity, targeting one, targeting two, like we do in college basketball with flagrant one versus flagrant two? I think it's time. This rule's been around for long enough to where we've got to look at this. And officials, because we know it's got to be fair to them. It's tough to call it full speed. That's why we've got the review. Yep. Officials have now gone through this enough to where I think we can afford to insert some nuance so you don't see a guy's day ended like this. You hate it for Dorian Williams. Letter of the law says it's targeting on a booth review. You have to confirm all aspects of targeting. It was. Williams no longer has to leave the game. He can stay on the sideline but Tulane loses its leading tackler from a season ago. First down Ole Miss. There's Connor, and this is where he makes his hay inside the 20, inside the 10-yard line with his powerful frame. 
And this is not a very deep linebacker group here that's already had to run a lot. These snaps can add up quick. Feeding Connor again. And Nick Anderson makes the tackle in the backfield. Senior out of Vicksburg, Mississippi. And the leader on this two-lane defense. And a smart guy. I mean, graduated third in his class in high school. His mom once sat him down because he got a B plus. My mom be doing cartwheels. Your mom started following me on Twitter. Be afraid, Anish. I uh, think be very afraid. Ball start. Offense, center, five-yard penalty, third down. Orlando Umana, four returning starters for Ole Miss up front. Umana, the Utah transfer, started a ton of games for the Utes. Coaches were telling us adjusting to the tempo in this offense. It's still in that adjustment period for Umana, who did not play last week. It's a different world, Anish, when you're finally going tempo. And we're seeing them now spread the full 53 and a third here. This two-lane defense having a tough time adjusting. Third down, 11 to go. Corral will try the quarterback draw again. Makes a man miss. Inside the five. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Matt Corral. His second rushing touchdown of the game. This is the accordion play right here, Anish. You spread them all out five wide. Your running backs out. You motion a player. So you get a light box as we see a little bit of scrapping going on in the end zone right now. Getting chippy early here. Ole Miss will go for two. They missed an extra point. And that quarterback draw play has worked now a couple of times for the Rebels. Two touchdowns been a low red zone threat for them. They stress the ends of this defense, and you're seeing a lot of tired faces on that side of the ball for Tulane. They understand they've got an advantage. They targeted at the beginning in this linebacker group. 200 plus total yards for Ole Miss in just the first quarter. Sanders denied Nick Anderson again that's the end of the first quarter timeout quarter one in the books Matt Corral's feet have been a difference maker early the quarterback's been getting loose and been getting low here lowering a shoulder again Penn State already has that Wisconsin win. Jaquan Jackson for Tulane. Accelerates across the 30. Let's look at that last Ole Miss touchdown. They've been stretching the entire length of the field. You're looking and going to see Snoop Coop, Connor, their running back, number 24, all the way out near the sideline. Then they bring Jonathan Mingo in motion. So you've got the defense all running right and it leaves all this space. They've thinned out the box. They've pulled linebackers away from the middle of the field all night, and then Corral just finishing it off with toughness. Fourth possession for Tulane, two three and outs. And then they were able to capitalize on a short field after an Ole Miss fumble. Cameron Carroll. A gain of a yard and a half, maybe. You're seeing a physical tone set by Ole Miss on defense and a lot of number three Otis Reese coming down and lighting them up. This defensive coaching staff, when we talked to Chris Partridge, their code DC, said when they got him eligible, when they got him available last season, it changed their defense. Only played in three games, but an immediate impact. A Georgia transfer. Carroll taken down in the backfield. Lakia Henry, he was the Rebels' top tackler two years ago, and... A third and long coming up for Tulane.
You can watch Chance Campbell eat up the offensive lineman and give Lakia Henry a free run over the top here. They're occupying gaps for this offensive line that's trying to zone it off. Three-man rush, Pratt will run. First down and more. In Ole Miss territory across midfield. A gain of 18 yards. He is not usually looking to slide. No, he's going to finish these runs. And the coaching staff was quick to tell us. As you see right here, this is the ace around draw. You get a double team on the nose. You get a puller for your quarterback in front. And then he's the battering ram that does the rest. They were quick to tell us better with his legs than he gets credit for. Tulane going to the quarterback draw, which has worked well for Ole Miss. Off play action, pressure coming. Pratt hit, downfield, it's caught. Deuce Watts, first and goal, Tulane. And Pratt stands in and takes a shot on that play. Watch the quarterback. We talk about the toughness on the run, but to stand there and know that Lakia Henry is going to deliver you a blow to the ribs. Remarkable. Here's Carroll. Fights his way to the five. And then Deuce. Great job just going through contact at the top of the route. Down here is where Tulane loves the misdirection. Get the defense running into each other, moving the wrong way. And then all of a sudden, 80 Tyrick James is sitting right in the middle, wide open. A flag down. Ball start, offense, number 64. Five yard penalty, second down. Corey Dublin, fifth year senior. Two-time state champion wrestler in high school. Not what you expect from the guy with 51 career starts coming into this game. You need poise down here. Because it's got to be points. It's got to be seven every series for this unit. Pratt to Carroll. Incomplete off his hands. He had a couple of touchdown catches in the Oklahoma game. He did, but Michael Pratt missed Tyrick James, his favorite target in the back corner of the end zone there. I'm shocked that the eyes aren't going right to 80 because you know that's who the defense is most worried about down here. James without a catch so far. On third down, Pratt looking for six, incomplete. Wanted Deuce Watts, covered well. Otis Reese back in coverage for the Rebels. Ole Miss this year put another defensive back on the field. You've seen so much of the 3-3-5 in college football. This is a 3-2-6, two linebackers and six DBs. And they only did that because they felt like this room had the bodies to do it. And Otis Reese and his versatility, you'll see him all over the field, a huge part of why. 27-yard field goal attempt for Merrick Glover. The kicking game has been inconsistent for Tulane the last few years. And Glover's kick is no good. In a game like this, when you know Ole Miss is going to score, hard to walk back to the sidelines after you leave points on the board. Thanks for hanging with us in Ishraf, Mike Golick Jr., Taylor McGregor. It's the SEC on ESPN. We weathered a delay of an hour 45. Taylor McGregor has to weather the elements tonight. Taylor. That's exactly what I'm doing, but good news is it's it's dried off here. But defensive line coach Byron Dawson for Tulane after the last time his defense came off the field told Jeffrey Johnson he needs to get to his spots. Corral taking a shot down. Field incomplete. Multiple flags. He wanted Braylon Sanders. Pass interference. Defense. Number 21. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. 
This is actually one of those spots where the ball being a bit underthrown helps because you've got Sanders, whose speed is the threat we talked about this defense worrying about, coming back to the ball. And if you don't turn around as a defensive back, in that moment, it's almost always going to draw a flag. So Jeffrey Johnson needing into the spots. Golik, what have you seen on that? Well, we saw on one of the first touchdown drives down in the low red zone. They tried to bring pressure, and you've got guys out of their gaps here. And all they need is a sliver. With athletes like Jerry and Ely in that backfield, if you give them a little bit of daylight, Taylor, they are gone. Well, that was Parrish. Corral over the middle. And it's Mingo for a first down. Give him 13. Changing directions. And Paris to the 40-yard line. Dorsey is the stop. Ole Miss right now averaging 6.7 yards on first down. It's no way to live, and you've been getting run on all night. You've got to add someone else to the box and stop the bleeding there and rely on your defensive backs to cover down tight. On second and short, Corral under pressure and sacked. It's Darius Hodges, the third-year redshirt freshman, and third and ten coming up. Nick Broker, a preseason third-team All-American, just gets beat. A great chop by Hodges on the edge and then closes the gap quickly. That's just winning your one-on-one -on -one battle against a darn good left tackle. Well, they've got Mingo in the backfield. Now he'll motion out. And a flag. All start, offense, number 51, five yard penalty, third down. On the center, Umana, his second penalty. Third and long, still plenty of time in this game, but given that Tulane has struggled to stop this Rebels offense, you get the fee feeling this, this possession presents a critical juncture in this game. And you're alert for the quarterback run as they spread the field again. This is exactly how they scored in the red zone before. Four-man pressure. Mingo makes the catch, gets away. First down and more. And Jonathan Mingo down to the 20-yard line for Ole Miss, a gain of 34. That's why they say you got to see what you hit. Put your head down here. And Jonathan Mingo ends up hitting him with the five-hole right here. Number seven, Lance Robinson. That's a tackle he's got to make. Corral on the slant, off the hands of Mingo, nearly intercepted by Robinson, who almost had a chance at redemption. They tried to hit him with the pump and go. Big play, you're down in the red zone now. Tried to see if they could get them to bite on the pump fake up front. Great job by the defensive backs not going for the fake. Snoop Connor in at running back. He gets the call, no, Corral will keep. And slides down, marked down at the 12, third down coming up. This is the area where you've got to watch out for 11. Dontario Drummond, they're lining him up in that tight end spot. And if you lose him, he's gone. Drummond is open in the flat. There he goes. Touchdown Ole Miss. Eight straight games with a touchdown for Mr. Drummond. Anish, it took him 22 games in an Ole Miss uniform to have his first 100-yard game. He walked into this one with three straight, and we mentioned the versatility. They raved about his ability to block, and so when you put him in that tight end spot there, it's easy when the pace gets fast to lose sight of him, to think it's just a tight end body in that formation, and now he's out the back, and now he's out the gate. PAT for Costa, who has missed one today. Ole Miss also failed on a two-point conversion earlier. And the kick is good. And at a critical juncture, they deliver on a big third down play by Mingo. But then it's the man, Dontario Drummond, sneaking past the pylon for another score.
ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Sonos, is brought to you by Pizza Hut. Order today at PizzaHut.com. Folks in Oxford have had a chance to watch some special wide receivers in the last decade plus. A.J. Brown, Laquan Treadwell, D.K. Metcalf, Elijah Moore, second round pick of the Ooh. Jets. And he may be next. Jaquan Jackson has the 20. Still going, and it runs into a roadblock shy of the 35. 26 to 7, Ole Miss. Five drives for the Rebels, four touchdowns, one lost fumble. And Tulane, a couple of three and outs. They scored off the fumble with the short field. The last drive, they get down inside the 10, miss a field goal. Undone by pre snap penalties and misreads by Pratt. Take a breath. You moved the ball well on that last drive. Don't lose sight of your game plan. It's still early. Tajay Spears, the running back. Play action. Pratt downfield. Nearly intercepted. He wanted tolls. Miles Battle, the junior from Houston, with the PBU. Yeah, threw that ball between worlds, just not enough under. You mentioned he wanted tolls. You saw Shea Wyatt there, and he threw it right between them there. Made it easy for the defensive back to go up and try and make a play. Pratt, a second-year freshman, did not start playing football until ninth grade. He'll throw. As Deuce Watts tackled immediately. Boom. Tylen Knight with the stop. It isn't up for a first down, a gain of 11. I tell you what, Tylen Knight is listed at 5'7", a buck 75. And if you turn on tape, you'll find him lighting dudes yes. up all over the place here. That man is unafraid and unbothered. Converted running back, made the move to the secondary five games in the last season. Pratt's got a running lane and a big one. And out of bounds, a couple of yards shy of the marker, third and short. And this... Again, likely four down territory. Absolutely, I mean, it's four down territory when they cross their own 40 right now, but this gives you an opportunity to involve the running backs back in the game. You've been spreading it out. Your quarterback's legs are a threat here. Let Ty J Spears in the backfield. Go ahead and tote this rock. Excuse me, second down. And there is Spears. They hope to get him going. He got off to a great start last year. Back-to-back 100-yard -back games, then tore his ACL. The road to recovery was long. He was still limping as late as May. Thought if football was in his future and questioned whether he could still play. Got a pep talk from his dad. And now looking to work his way back into form. And Spears turns that into a couple of extra yards. Otis Reese, the Georgia transfer, in on the stop. You're going to see a hockey line change now for Ole Miss on defense, getting some fresh bodies as Tulane's driving here. Let's give Michael Pratt another shot downfield here. Took one before, underthrew it a bit here. Got to put some air out under for these track speed wideouts. Pratt just four out of ten. Shea Wyatt. He's slippery. There he goes. Touchdown, Tulane. Mentioned all the track speed on this offense here. That time, you get some of the dancing bears out on parade. The left side of this line on the move and getting just enough. That's all it's got to be. You don't block anyone in the back to get in the way. And then you let your athletes make plays. And Shea Wyatt, I mean, the D2 Central Missouri transfer was a second-team D2 All-American there, showing off the wheels, getting this team back in it. 1,400-plus yards two years ago, granted D2. Impressive nonetheless. And the PAT by Glover is good. Big Joey Claybrook. Big Corey Dublin out there in space. Springing a man. And then it's a race to the end zone that Shea Wyatt wins for Tulane. Ole 
Week two, NFL Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Countdown comes your way. We go all access with Jameis Winston, Saints Panthers. Jameis, five touchdown passes in week one, taking over as New Orleans starter post Drew Brees. Plus, you got Moss. Randy Moss breaks down the best catches in college football. The Oklahoma interception has to be Ooh. on there. Best interception I've seen. Making the logo on the front of their jerseys very proud with that extension and effort. Woo! Anish Raff, Mike Golick Jr., Taylor McGregor. It's turned into SEC after dark. Tulane with an onside kick covered up by Ole Miss. And that tells you the respect the Green Wave have for this Ole Miss offense. Tons trying to capitalize on an opportunity. This was not a team that wants to play scared. Go back to week one, Tulane fell behind Oklahoma 37-14. Didn't matter, they came back, outscored the Sooners on the road, 21-3 in the second half. They had a fourth and 13, driving with the ball with a chance to win. They only got 12. They had a nightmare second quarter in that game, similar to the first here. It's never insurmountable. They've got proof of that. And then last week, dropping 69 on Morgan State. Corral is going to take a shot downfield. He's got Mingo. Touchdown, Rebels. The pendulum back and forth with violence. What a battle. You talked about the chess match. This is 4D Wizards chess going on right now because no one is afraid of violence. Onside kick attempt by Willie Fritz. And so what does Lane Kiffin do? Whip motion, pump fake, and then throw it to one of your best targets down the field. What a ball by Matt Corral. A 50-yard strike. And it felt like a momentum play. Tulane tries the onside kick, looking to capitalize off the momentum from their touchdown. Ole Miss says, okay, we get the ball, watch this, and it's Mingo 50 yards downfield. And he pumps fake to that whip motion that came out of the backfield, and that gets him a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Wingo. You see, look at Mingo downfield then. Wide open, puts the ball out in front of him there. But you saw out on that perimeter, if you hold for just a second, and that's all they needed with the eyes from that pump fake, now you got one of your best guys in space. Ole Miss came into this game averaging more than 30 points in the first half through the first two weeks. Louisville and Austin P, the opponents, 33 on Tulane. Seven plus minutes to go. And Matt Carroll has been sublime Four total touchdowns, two through the air, two on the ground. All you need to know about this offense, Anish, they broke the 2019 LSU team's record for offensive yards per game in the SEC. That team with Joe Burrow and all those fun guys. Jackson. To the 32. An extra hour and 45 minutes to get to kickoff. Had rain all day here in Oxford. Lightning a couple of hours before the game, delaying the start. We told you Tulane has been used to the unexpected. Hurricane Ida forced them to relocate to Birmingham before their first game. That Oklahoma game moved from New Orleans to Norman. They played Morgan State in Birmingham last week as YG Booker gets the call. The Green Wave do get to go home tomorrow to New Orleans, and they will play their first real home game of the season next weekend against UAB. But it's been three weeks living out of a Sheraton in Birmingham, Alabama. Living with a lot of the other athletic department, too. They relocated everybody. And for Willie Fritz and the staff, he mentioned, it's been a good chance to get to know a lot of the other athletes. As we see Michael Pratt scrambling there. Chance Campbell. He's been another difference maker. Transfer portal, Maryland's leading tackler a season ago. They said he came in and immediately 
his voice started making an impact. Watch him all the way on the back side of this play. He comes up and lays a big hit last time, and now eyes up here, sees the quarterback, and then puts his foot in the ground and makes that decision now. He's going to dictate the terms, and that's what he's done ever since he wound up here at Ole Miss. Third down. Tyreek James, who's been a big target for Tulane, quiet today without a catch. Pratt under duress, shovels it off. It's dropped. That'll be incomplete. Brumfield could not hold on. And Tulane will have to punt. Anish, I thought that was a draw initially because you got saw so many guys up front get beat at once. And that's unusual when Sincere Hainsworth, one of your best offensive linemen, is hanging on in the middle of that. You know there was an issue there. That was supposed to be a play-action shot that looked like a draw. Where has Ole Miss grown up the most defensively from last year? Oh, it's that front three. It, it, it's so night and day. And for what they want to do on the back end, they've got to get upfield production by those guys as we see special teams rearing its ugly head again for Tulane. Wright's punt lands out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. Just shy of the 40. Ole Miss on attack again. Welcome back to College Football on ESPN, presented by Sonos. Matt Corral making a difference in the air and with his legs here this evening. When you talk to him about the biggest difference for him this year, he says it's having a clean mind. He felt like last year some of the installs were just too much. But in the offseason, putting in a ton of work, learning this playbook, but also hey, I'm not comfortable with this play. He says, if I can't visualize the play immediately, it becomes mind clutter, and that's something they've tried to avoid completely this year, guys. Call it mind clutter. Call it rat poison. Ely with an opening. Accelerates. 11 plays now for Ole Miss of at least 10-plus yards. That goes for 19. Six possessions for the Rebels. Five touchdowns so far. Corral sends it long. Flag down. Incomplete. Wanted Braylon Sanders. Throw was there. Throw was Pass there. Defense. defense. Number nine. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. In college, pass interference. Not a spot foul. Now, this is another dime, and the only reason that wasn't a touchdown is because Monroe interfered. Well, I tell you what, he got there pretty close, too. You feel for defensive backs there, but that's the speed of Braylon Sanders that we've been talking about. That's why he's looked like the number one threat for a lot of tonight, because he can stress you in a way few other players can. Ely. It's the hole hard, close to the 20-yard line. Monroe the stop. Hard not to look ahead if you're a Rebels fan. Bye week, and then Bama. Who found themselves in a close one down there in the swamp. Yeah, exactly. I think for a lot of people, that was an eyes open moment to wonder if they were going to be the unbeatable juggernaut they looked like through two weeks. You had the uh, Alabama and everyone else tweet ready to go. Died in your draft folder. Thank goodness. Don't press send, Herm. Caught by the tight end to Chase Rogers. Louisiana transfer, third season with the Rebels. Third down. Mingo. 10, 5. Dropped by Macon Clark. A flag down at the 11. Yeah, Drummond's done a lot of good, but they got him there. That's going to be a hold and bring this back. During the run, holding offense, number 11. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat, third down.
Yeah, Nish, if you look back on that play, Tulane was kind of scrambling to get up there. You saw them send pressure. They had one player out here covering two. Easy decision to give Drummond a chance, a good blocker in space. Penalty 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so nothing really changes. It's still third and five. The penalty happened at the 11. Snoop Connor in the game. Here's the blitz. The give is to Connor, and tripped up by Angelo Anderson. Uh, that call again on third and five going to the ground makes you think they're thinking four downs all the way here. You got it ready to go here. And now for this two-lane defense, looking to the side again. No substitution. And two plays in the holster. And a first down for Ole Miss. Connor picks up five. The best thing all these Ole Miss running backs do, and Connor there, is they start straight downhill and they make all the linebackers commit up to the middle, and then they're so adept at putting their foot into the ground and making that bounce. Drummond in the slot. Corral checks down to his tight end, Rodgers. A short gain. Fourth catch of the season for Chase Rodgers. You're going to have a move behind that soon. The linebackers for Tulane have started to see. All right, tight end in their hip. Got to watch him leaking out of the backside here. Going to be something open downfield. And movement. Ball start. Offense. Number 51. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's three on the center. And we told you, Umana, the Utah transfer, New to this offensive line, did not play last week, and the coaches were telling us he's still feeling his way into this offense, which is vastly different than what they ran in Salt Lake City. The pace is certainly different, but you control the snap, and 27 start, you know, 26 starts coming to this team. Can't have that. Corral will keep it, and dragging a tackler, finally brought down by Sidon and Kennedy, picks up six, third down, just shy of the 10. We've seen in these third and medium situations, runner pass here. This is a good time for Tulane to start twisting around some of those bodies up front here. Try and create some seams upfield and knock them back. Make them think a long, hard time about going on fourth. Here's Drummond. Has the edge. Tiptoes the sideline. Touchdown, Drummond. Just too much speed. Watch Snoop Connor on the edge here. The running back leading out in space, and then bam, gets the hit right there to level the defensive back and open up a great lane for Dontario Drummond. Finding the end zone, skirting right past it again. A receiving touchdown and a rushing touchdown for Drummond. Came on in the bowl game last year. Three straight 100-yard games entering today. Five TDs on the young season. And Ole Miss has dropped a 40 spot in this first half. It's remarkable, and it's just too much speed all over the field. You've got to have your eyes in so many spots. And when those guys are willing, the guys carrying the ball to get out and block, you've seen Drummond block in this game now. You saw Snoop Connor block there. When you've got that kind of selflessness in a room full of guys that know there are plenty of touches in this offense for me. That's how you get plays down in this area of the field. Let's check in with Kevin. Ohio State looks vulnerable in the Big Ten, more than they've looked in many years. Penn State has an Auburn win and a Wisconsin win. What are your impressions three weeks in of the Nittany Lions? A strong group. We know they had to weather a lot of injury last season in a COVID year. Sean Clifford didn't quite live up to a lot of that billing coming into the year. They've settled down, and that offense is making big plays now. Jackson from the two. Dropped hard at the 27. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Livma student section of the year contest. 
Use hashtag student section sauce to get the committee's attention and go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Unfortunate today, we had rain, we had lightning, a delay of almost two hours. It drove a lot of fans away. Some have stayed, parents weekend, so many getting a chance to see Ole Miss. Your first trip to Oxford, you took a tour around the Grove. Let me tell you what, the hospitality here is second to none. And just the environment they've created around here has been remarkable. And we know Lane Kiffin, ever the showman. We've seen him out there trying to get Katy Perry back on campus for games. He made no bones about he wants this to be a party. And you've seen in this stadium, they had the DJ rocking during the weather delay. They've got the light show in here. That's what Ole Miss has become in college football. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense, number 35. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. That's on Mark Robinson, the former walk on, put on scholarship before camp. Now, right there. Yeah, that'll get you. That'll get you reamed out in the film session coming up on Monday. And book that. 2.02 to go. Tulane looking for a score before halftime. Pratt. Looking to find a Northwest Passage, picks up three. Kevin. All right, thanks, Kevin. Cameron Carroll moving the pile, a gain of a dozen. And if you're Tulane right now, you got a buck 22, the clock stops when they move the chains there. You've got all three timeouts at your disposal here. Plenty of time to operate if you're Michael Pratt. You don't have to speed up the clock in your head too much right now. You need six, you need a touchdown. Nothing there for Pratt. And Sam Williams in the backfield. His fourth sack of the season. We get a timeout. 57 seconds to go in the first half. An agent of chaos defensively for the Rebels this year. Uh, just pure energy. I know we talk about high motor guys a lot. It becomes sort of a buzzword, but timeout. it's the truth with him. But in that spot, Michael Pratt, you've got to live to fight another down. You've got to send that ball to bounce. I know you've got the timeouts, but taking a spat, sack in this spot, losing valuable yardage can't happen. Two timeouts remaining for Tulane. Sunday night baseball, the big series finale, Phillies Mets at City Field. Both teams chasing that second wild card spot. You can watch on ESPN. The app ESPN Deportes. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight. Now this is a spot in the game Tulane will get the ball to start the second half. Field goals are, are not going to cut it today. No, irrelevant at this point. And again, two tight ends, uh, two timeouts, excuse me, in the hole right now. You've got the whole arsenal at play here. And I've still been amazed. Tyrant James, number 80, has been silent tonight. We're going to put him on a milk cart. One catch at this point. Empty look on second down. 13 to go. Three man rush, Ole Miss dropping eight. There's James. Don't mistake him for DB Cooper anymore. Two catches on this drive. That good for 19. Momentarily stops the clock. And that's how quick the ball's got to come out of Pratt's hands because if they're in drop back protection, they're at risk. That's not where they want to live. Pratt has James, he's open, and a touchdown by Tyreek James. Uh, you kept on saying this entire first half, find your big fella. They did on that drive three times. They did on that drive, and they caused a traffic jam in that area of the field here. You're going to see Ole Miss defenders on their backs as Tulane gets ready to kick the field goal right here. A great job of getting bodies in that area, using one of your wideouts to pick for your tight end and getting them a walk-in touchdown. We promised offense in this game, huh? 60 points 
in this first half. I know some of you are counting. Make it 61. So we talked about Tyrick James, all the ways that you can use him. You're going to look at the bottom of the screen. He's lined up, attached to the line of scrimmage number 80. You're going to believe Deuce Watts right there running in and getting a hit right there. I'm surprised they didn't call that. To be honest, you're lowering his shoulder into the defender at that point. Could have very easily been offensive pass interference on that play. You know, you're supposed to call it a rub, get out of the way, try and olay the defender so you barely get him past there. He put a flipper into him there. And for Tulane, you're fortunate you get that call to go your way, but I'm sure Lane Kiffin has to be hot on the other sideline. I, I know you just had a Notre Dame Florida State flashback. <sighs> Man, still too soon, Anish. It's always going to be too soon. Now, Tulane tried an onside kick earlier in this half. They have not been able to stop Ole Miss. 42 seconds, three timeouts for the Lane Train. Plenty of time for the Rebels. Rebels ball at the 25 this season, along with their contributions to the university's general scholarship funds. For every field goal and extra point made, Allstate will be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts. Thank you, Allstate. Certainly Tulane, a school based in New Orleans, hit hard by Hurricane Ida. More than a million people in the state of Louisiana lost power. The Tulane campus lost power. They did start, start online classes on Monday this week, but still a lot of help needed, especially in that community. 42 seconds, three timeouts. Corral to the air, steps up. He was hit incomplete, a grounder to Mingo. Saw his feet just slip out from underneath him there. This is a great spot. I mean, these two-lane defensive linemen all night have had their head on a swivel. So much pace thrown at them. They get to finally pin their ears back here for this group up front. 400-plus yards in this first half for Ole Miss. Parrish flagged down. Illegal shift, offense, never comes set after a shift. Five yard penalty, second out. Ely comes in to replace Parrish. Lane Kiffin telling us that Jerry and Ely used in the same way that Kiffin used Kenyon Drake at Alabama. Yeah, said he liked it to that kind of versatility there. Wasn't ready to go so far as, let's say, Reggie Bush, but certainly dynamic in that backfield. Here is Ely. Into the secondary and beyond, still going. That'll momentarily stop the clock. 22 seconds to go. Let's see if Ole Miss uses a timeout. They're going to save it. They get do up and not. Go. Clock continues to run. Corral to Ely. Gobbled up right at the line of scrimmage, and now the Rebels call their first timeout. 11 seconds to go. Hey, should they timeout. have used a timeout on Hold that it. previous sequence? Probably, but you can understand with a team that's used to getting up to play like that, you've got the next play ready. That's such a built-in part of their offense there. I don't think you lost too much not spending that timeout. Ely, a great job shifting his feet in the backfield there. There was penetration, and these backs all night, they've been downhill, and again, such a good job staying square to the line of scrimmage, making the linebackers have to honor that, and then they're so quick to a man to be able to score it outside. The broken tackles tonight for Ole Miss have been off the charts. Now they've got three really good running backs. Ely coming off off-season shoulder surgery. He's on the Ole Miss baseball team, did not play in the spring, is still recovering. Big first half today, though, 85 yards on 12 carries. Parrish, 8 for 59 and a touchdown.
Corral's got a couple of rushing touchdowns. 11 seconds to go, two timeouts in the holster. Three-man rush, there's Drummond out of bounds. Clock stops, only took off four seconds, and Ole Miss has a kicker, a young one in Costa, who's got a strong leg, so if he can get to the sideline here with some time left and a timeout, you might have a chance for a long field goal attempt. Yeah, Tulane on defense getting ready for a little, uh, what does Scott Van Pelt call it? Pitchy, pitchy, woo-woo? Pitchy, pitchy, woo-woo. And I mean, Ole Miss has enough time and space right here. You can get the first down, get out of bounds, have three seconds left, and set up for a much more manageable shot at the end zone. Corral over the middle. They'll take a knee. Three seconds to go, and this sets up Costa after a gain of 16. So Tulane dropped everybody back. Timeout. Ole Miss. Let's see if the kicking team comes on. The offense looking to the sideline, and now Costa will come on. And this will be about a 53, 54-yard attempt. Yeah, and he's certainly questionable, but at this point, if you're Tulane, you know you're getting beat by sevens in this game. Three is not your enemy in this spot, and so they're just afraid of what we've seen all night. These dynamic athletes getting loose in space and making the worst-case scenario happen for you. Timeout. Second charge. Timeout, timeout of Tulane. This is a full timeout. They'll try to freeze the freshman. Kale Nation took the first kick of the season for Ole Miss, missed an extra point against Louisville. Then it was Costa, first career attempt. <laughs> Labor Day national TV game against the Cardinals, and he drills a 47-yarder. They knew they had a talented guy. I think he was a 24-7 composite seventh-ranked kicker in that class, but you never know how someone's going to respond under pressure. An opening weekend of college football, they were the solo act on Monday, and he responded well as Tulane's got a returner back now. Remember, keep that in play. They've done a good job on the normal kickoff returns. Big bodies that might have to cover down here. Jaquan Jackson in the back of the end zone. A 54-yarder for Costa. This one is up. And good. No good. Excuse me, he missed it. <laughs> That's the end of the first half. Timeout. Well, he had the length easy on that, Anish. That was effortless, just a bit outside. Yeah. Oh, just Woo. missed it. Fans on our side roared up, had the distance just a bit wide to the studio in Kevin Connors. College football on ESPN presented by Sonos. It's the SEC on ESPN. Tulane, once a member of the SEC, down 19 at the half to 17th ranked Ole Miss. And he's Shroff, Mike Golick Jr. We'll check in with Taylor McGregor in just a moment. Uh, we knew this Tulane or this Ole Miss offense could score. The lane train almost 450 yards in the first half. Uh, pretty much every time they had the ball, they had a chance to score. Everything going right for them, and it starts in early downs. They've been doing so well on first and second down that an Ole Miss team who came in with a flaw tonight, only 38% converting on third downs, up over 63% tonight. It is all going right for them at critical junctures. And Matt Corral, their quarterback, through the air with his legs, accounting for four touchdowns in that first half. Tulane will receive the second half kickoff. And it's Jaquan Jackson. Bumped out of bounds hard. And we could get a late hit. Half the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, kicking team number four. 
15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. It is Tylen Knight. And so that gives two lanes some solid starting field position. Plan to play brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. And this is what happens when you've got dynamic playmakers all over the skill position rooms who are also selfless here. You see the handoff on the end around, and then you see the running back Snoop Connor out in front lead blocking. We know Drummond no, akin to lead blocking. All of these guys are willing to go to work for each other. And when you know the ball is going to get spread around as much as it does in this offense, makes it a lot easier to buckle your chin strap and block for your buddy. From the 47, it's Cameron Carroll. Not much room on the edge. This was a game that was delayed at the onset, almost an hour 45. We had rain, we had lightning, soggy field early. It has not slowed down Ole Miss one bit. Now that traction favors the offense in these games. Dynamic athletes in space have been making these defenders play flat-footed. Pratt chased. Flag down. It's back at the 43. Holding offense, number 64. 10 yard penalty, repeat, first down. The left guard, Correct. Dublin, second. Taylor. Well, at halftime, Willie Fritz talking about how his offense, it's all self-inflicted wounds. Now, defensively, he says it's all about tackling better. That's what we heard on the sideline. They need their guys to get to their spots to prevent this uh, Ole Miss offense from being explosive. And then Kitch Coach Kiffin talked exactly about that Oklahoma game. He goes, we know what Tulane can do in the second half. They outscored Oklahoma 21-3, to so we have to be prepared. We have to keep scoring offensively. Now, that was a game where Tulane trailed 37-14. Had a chance to win late. Carroll open, has running room. And tackled shy of the original marker. It's Campbell and Jalen Jordan. Campbell, the Maryland transfer, was the Terps' leading tackler in a shortened season last year. And this is a reminder at this point in the game, this can be four down territory. Your quarterbacks help use his legs in this running game here. The draws in play here, him scrambling is in play here. And if you get close enough, I'd be ready to pull the trigger with a fourth down play. They had a spy on Pratt. It's Campbell. Pratt changing directions and gets across midfield, well shy of the marker, fourth down. And do you expect Willie Fritz to go for it? I think they're going to be aggressive in this spot. This is a team who had the onside kick. They're not even thinking twice about it here. And so, again, we talked about him big on the last drive in the first half here. Number 80, Tyrick James, that tight end in the bottom of the bunch formation right here, leading that point. He's great getting these curls in the middle of the field, giving a big target for Pratt. Tulane, heavy on analytics. Pratt looking for running room. Throws downfield, incomplete. Two flags fly in. Pass interference, offense, number 80. That penalty is declined. Result of play, first down, Ole Miss. And Anish, I can almost guarantee going into halftime, Lane Kiffin had a talk with the officials about the pick play we saw on the touchdown for Tyrant James earlier in that game. Too physical on these bunch plays, and you're going to watch 80 coming off the line right here, blocking downfield, essentially turning that into a drive block, and you just can't do it. There's got to be nuance to these routes when you're trying to clear space there. That time, after you have that play, is such a big part of the last half, easy for the officials to spot. Fourth down stop for the Rebels. They take over a yard shy of midfield. Six offensive touchdowns on eight possessions in that first half for Ole Miss. Here's the blitz. Corral escaping. He'll run. And wisely gets out of bounds. A pickup of eight. We got a flag down, way downfield. Also, there's an injured two-lane player back at the Ole Miss 45. Hicks, the injured player. Flag was thrown well upfield. Holding defense, number seven. Ten-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Enforcement results in a first down, Ole Miss. That's on Lance Robinson, the Kansas State transfer. 
Harris able to get up. Remember, Tulane lost its leading tackler from a season ago, Dorian Williams, to a targeting call in that first half. And Ole Miss has exploited this linebacking core. They have, and you see them in the secondary. And again, it's Braylon Sanders so worried about the speed. You've got two guys rolled over the top. Larry Brooks coming into the frame there. Kevin Henry and Jeffrey Johnson getting in the backfield. And that is a rare negative play on first down for Ole Miss. Tulane's decided early in this series they're going to bring these linebackers on blitzes. They're going to let them go downhill. You've seen a couple of those now. That also means Ole Miss can squirt one out the other side if they're not disciplined. The toss to Ely. Gets the corner. Cuts it back. And Jerry and Ely fighting through four white shirts for a gain of 14 to move the chains. I'd love to know the yards after contact tonight because they've been breaking tackles at every turn here. Now it looks like they're going to mark him just shy of the line to gain. So second and short. And now Ely picks up the first down, bumped from behind as he gets to the 15. Clark with the push. First down Ole Miss. You're seeing tired legs. Making Clark, he was coming on the blitz. Darius Hodges and both pulled up in the big seam where the blitzers were. Great cutoff by the line. Matt Corral keeps it, and he's got his third rushing touchdown. Anish, this was a great spot by Lane Kiffin, who saw after that last blitz, you had Hodges making Clark the backside of that defense for Tulane, really starting to huff and puff. And so you call a read option, you make them commit up to the run that they've been selling out to stop, and then let Matt Corral skate out the back. Ole Miss has already run 63 plays. Remember the line on Secretariat during the Belmont Stakes? Like a tremendous machine. That's what the lane train has been so far. The offense firing on every cylinder. Matt Corral last year became the first SEC player to lead the country in total offense since Johnny Manziel. Much was made of his five interception game against LSU, six picks against Arkansas. But he has the faith, the trust of this coaching staff. And when we talked to him, you saw a football IQ that was well beyond his years. Jackson tripped up across the 30, lost the football, and the Rebels have it. Miles Battle recovered it. Rig on the field as the ball was fumbled during the return, recovered by Ole Miss. First down. And let's see if that ball comes out here. Yep, yep it does. That arm can go down, but the elbow has to come down for him to be ruled down, and that ball is out. Clearly up, great punch out, and a brutal break there. Kick return had been an area of strength for Tulane most of the night. But that time, the ball just carried too loose by Jaquan Jackson. Matt Corral has not thrown an interception this season. Let's see if Ole Miss takes a shot. Sudden change. Instead, out of the backfield, the flare to Parrish. Afterburners. And tripped up on that far sideline. Larry Brooks, the safety. 24 more on the play. Anish, this defense is tired here. This screams Jet Mosin pitch. This screams Matt Corral leaking out of the backfield again. Corral will keep it. He'll try to run for it. Hurdles. And he is in. Four rushing touchdowns. He's put up video game numbers tonight. 
Ole Miss has a bye. If he plays well like he did last year against Alabama in two weeks, he is moving to the top of the Heisman conversation. This bit of college football season where we've looked to a lot of the star quarterbacks that we had coming in to this season. Think North Carolina and Sam Howell. Think what we've seen. The team that Tulane knows all too well and Spencer Rattler in Oklahoma. And no one's really separated themselves as of yet. Matt Corral right now stands atop the heap. And you pointed out, he's going to have a marquee game and a chance to stamp his name on that Heisman resume. 53 points for Ole Miss. There's still almost 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Four rushing touchdowns for Corral. Two through the air. And we talked about it. This defense coming off sudden change, the pump fake there, it's... It's all here in these. They understand they've got a decided speed advantage. And when you've got a defense that was just gashed, that got beat on the same play for a touchdown on the prior drive here, their heads are spinning right now. There's been too much at every level of this offense. You think about his journey. 2019, he goes down. John Rice Plumley comes in, ends up rushing for more than 1,000 yards. He had to win the job last year. He does. Really only had two bad games. And he has carried a lot of the hype, and so is this team, into 2021. Lane Kiffin was joking about the preseason hype with us. He said, hey, I was at USC in year three. We were preseason number one. We didn't want guys buying into it. Didn't turn out the way they wanted with Ole Miss. Now, Lane knows that hype is good. It gets you attention. But this is a focused team that we've seen so far this year and much better also on the defensive side. Big hit there on kickoff coverage. And Anish, you saw him make use. Extra yard for Teachers Week is an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country at games and on social media. To learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers, follow at CFP Extra Yard. Now Michael Pratt comes from a family where mom was a teacher. He was homeschooled until eighth grade. Went to high school in ninth grade and that's when he started playing football for the first time. His mom, Rory, is his role model, currently a principal at Purpose Academy in Pompano Beach, Florida. She's got a master's in education. She homeschooled not just Michael, but all of his siblings. I praise for mom, Rory. Gotta love having a teacher at home here. We always talk about having a coach's son on the field, having a teacher's son. I got to imagine plays pretty huge dividends, and we've seen that from Michael Pratt early in his career. YG Booker on the catch. And there is the Pratt family. Dad Wayne, Mom Rory, Sister Hannah. Hannah's a junior at Columbia where she's a basketball player. Athletes and smart in the Pratt family here. Mom must be very proud. Yeah. Third and one. Tajay Spears stood up. Easy to point to the score and dismiss that play. But that means something to this Ole Miss defense that was much maligned a year ago. Frankly, it was one of the worst defenses in the country. And you're seeing, oh, listen, two lanes out here. They know they've got nothing less to lose. A little homage to the former triple option offense here with the wing tee set up on fourth down. Carroll lined up as the B-back, two slot backs, and a flag down. Right of the snap, false start, offense, number 84, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Will Wallace, the warrior poet, flagged. No freedom there, strictly no. flags as the punt team heads out onto the field now.
while we're giving love to teachers, I'd be remiss if I didn't shout out my sixth grade English teacher, Dr. Hardigan, uh -huh. DM'd me. She is an Ole Miss alum. She was in the band here. She talked about getting to go to every game during Archie Manning's senior year. And tech savvy enough to be shooting DMs. Very excited to hear from Dr. Hardigan. Absolutely incredible. Now, see, we learned something during SEC After Dark. Mike Golick's sixth grade teacher slipping into his DMs. Here in Oxford, the last name Manning, royalty of course, Archie, the patriarch, Ole Miss quarterback, 1968 to 1970, son Eli, first overall pick, quarterback in the early 2000s, and perhaps a third generation of Mannings could find themselves in Oxford. Arch Manning, he's the son of Cooper, Peyton and Eli's brother, top pocket passer in the ESPN 300. Ole Miss is on his list. He was at the Georgia game with dad today. Georgia taking on South Carolina. And that picture of Arch dated, he's beefed up a little bit. Yeah. Corral on the deep slant. He's got Braylon Sanders. Staying with tempo. Parrish to midfield. Taylor. Offensive line really wanted to be better with some of the twists and stunts that they've seen. Really focused on communicating in those. They felt like some of the twists were confusing them and they needed to be better communicating. Corral takes off and slides safely for a first down. That was one of the biggest things that stuck out to me. Anish Taylor coming out of the game against Louisville is for as good as the offense played in that game, they were turning a lot of guys loose here. Seeing everything through one set of eyes, such an important part about playing the position. Corral launches it downfield. He's got Sanders. Another touchdown for Ole Miss. 60. Boy. We knew Dontario Drummond had been the name so far, but everyone had heard Braylon Sanders and all that speed. You're going to look, pull the offensive lineman, get everyone to buy up, so you get one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. No safety help there for Jalen Monroe, who's a great cover corner for Tulane, but that's just too much speed without any help because of the great play fake up front. The point after is good, and Ole Miss hanging a Roger Maris on Tulane. It's been whatever they want tonight here, and Braylon Sanders take a bow, a breakout game, as every Ole Miss receiver has their moment. Seven total touchdowns by Matt Corral tonight. Tying the school record set by Showboat Boykin back in 1951. That's on the birth certificate, right? <laughs> Kale Nation will kick this off. Corral's day may be done. Four rushing touchdowns, three through the air. And Jaquan Jackson. Road closed quickly at the 24. It's time to represent Ole Miss by showing us how big you're going tonight. Submit your best fan video to hashtag show your Saturday and you might just get your 15 seconds of fan fame. We have a flag down. Jackson being helped off the field. They may look at targeting here. We saw the violent collision yep. at the time on this. A couple of Ole Miss defenders in there. And I think they're taking a look. Jalen Jordan, I believe, was the player on the hit as we take a look back at this.
And that's dangerous for yeah. both players right there. For Jalen Jordan, you see him reach for his head right after. That's a see what you hit. I mean, forget the crown. That's the top of his helmet. Not a defenseless player, so you are looking for a player leading with the crown of his helmet and making forcible contact. Jordan does that coming in from the side. Hard to tell there, but on that first look, it looked like he came in straight with the crown, and the crown runs really from where the face mask ends all the way to the back of the helmet. The only way he might get off is that he almost misses on the hit because his head is so low here. I think most of the contact that yeah, came from 11 came Austin Keys, and Keys does lower his shoulder. And remember, when the booth looks at targeting, they have to confirm all aspects of targeting. After video review, there is no foul for targeting. First down. And great that he doesn't have to sit out here, but that's an easy teachable lesson on the sideline here. Forget getting thrown out of the game. Could have been seriously hurt going in and tackling that way for both ball carrier and tackler. Now, almost friendly fire there, too. 61-21. Still more than seven and a half to go in the third quarter. 600-plus yards for Ole Miss tonight. Cameron Carroll searching for some running room, picks up a dozen. And you see everything you need to know about Michael Pratt at quarterback. I mean, look at his jersey. We talked about the toughness coming in. That's what's going to continue to lead this team going forward. And they've weathered a lot. They're not going to quit towards the end of this game, even though it is certainly far, far out of reach at the moment. Jatavian tolls with nowhere to go. The Rebels blow it up. It's KD Hill. Looked like that. Might have been a reverse, and Ole Miss got in the backfield too quickly. It just poor timing right there. You're looking for another one of those jet handoffs there, but you get no movement from Cam Carroll in the backfield, and so the timing on those is so important. At this point, it appeared to be some miscommunication on the snap count. Cam Carroll didn't look like he was ready. Pratt got a yard. On his right arm, quarterback Michael Pratt has the tattoo that says, Believe Seven. That's for his high school teammate from Deerfield Beach, Bryce Gowdy, who committed suicide back in December of 2019. Gowdy was a Georgia Tech commit as a wide receiver. Believe was his motto. Seven was Gowdy's number in high school, and Pratt wears that number proudly to honor his friend. Escaping, and not much. Hill again, fourth down. And it looked like he had Shea Wyatt open in the middle of the field, but at this point, he's just not seeing the field the way that we're accustomed to with him. Pretty good protection by the offensive line, and they're gonna punt and give their defense some relief right now. Fan favorite, John Rice Plumley, back deep to return the punt for Ole Miss. Converted quarterback, now a slot receiver. And he makes the fair catch inside his own 20. Let's see if Ole Miss brings out the offense, the first to string. 61 points, 5.15 to go, third quarter. It has been relentless. You see Plumley and then Kincaid Dent both with their helmets on over there. I have a feeling Lane Kiffin, again, we mentioned him being the showman, put John Rice Plumley in before. We've still got Corral going out there right now. But I won't be shocked if we see Plumley in here before the end of the night. Give people a show with the Hattiesburg native. Now Luke Altmeyer, the true freshman quarterback, is unavailable today. So Kincaid Dent, the backup quarterback. And you mentioned Plumley, certainly an option. Corral's going to throw. 
Over the middle. He's got Snoop Connor. All right, you're Tulane defensively. You're going to walk away from the first three games knowing a lot about your defense. You have now faced Spencer Rattler and Matt Corral. You want to throw Sam Howell in there. We might be talking about the three best quarterbacks in the country. You've got a lot of quality reps on tape. And listen, tonight comes at the end of a long journey for them. Displaced by a hurricane, spending time in the hotel. You can see there's some tired legs out here where it might just be adding up at this point. Because they've earned the respect of a nation. They did that against Oklahoma earlier this season. You saw Spencer Rattler come out and say, that is one of the toughest teams we've played against top to bottom, one of the hardest hitting teams we've played against. Elaine Kiffin this week said, hey, there's an SEC feel to Tulane. And he doubled down on that with us. He said that was not coach speak. Maybe it was, but he stayed true to that as Sanders gets close to the first down marker. Listen, you've got guys on every level of this defense here. We know we've been missing Dorian Williams here as well for the entire night. You okay with this? Fourth and one inside your own 30, up 40, going for it? This is how they operate. And they'll move the chains. Anish, to me, those are tone setters. I mean, there's no harm, no foul there. And if you want to cry sportsmanship on the other side at all and all this, I was never one to get bent out of shape about a blowout and the other team continuing to do their thing. It's our job to stop you. And if we can't do that, that's on me. I'm not going to worry about what that other sideline has going. Mingo, a flag is down. Jonathan Mingo has set a career high in receiving yards today. Yeah, they might have gotten one of those linemen for being too far downfield, the give and take of these RPO run pass options. What's that challenge like? We'll get that from you after the call. More receiver downfield, offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty remains first down. You're just blocking a run up front. That, that's one of those things that's out of your hands based on the structure here. And we've seen in college football especially, they're going to give you a lot of wiggle room when it comes to that. So you're up front, you're blocking for the run. It's the huge advantage here because it takes so much. And you're going to watch 54 Caleb Warren climbing up to that second level, trying to do a good job here. Oh, excuse me, that was Nick, Bo uh, Nick Broker going up there. Corral heaves it downfield for Sanders. And that's going to be defensive pass interference on a Johnny Kerr. Uh, they've had trouble keeping up with Braylon Sanders on those vertical routes. Pass interference, defense number 21, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. 37 first downs for Ole Miss, a school record, and only eight away from the NCAA record of 45 set by Texas Tech in 2003. That time, getting there early again. This has been the give and take of the underthrown balls on some of these deep shots as you're coming back into a defender who hasn't turned around. As we More break off green run. grass. That's Connor again. And the crowd with a chant of Snoop. 16. Thirty-eight first downs now. Corral pumps under pressure, and that might be grounding. It will be. There was not an eligible receiver in the area. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage, and he was between the tackles. Intentional grounding, offense number two. The penalty has lost it down at the spot of the foul. Second down. Really, the only mistake Matt Corral has made all night. Right, you could say maybe he's underthrown a couple of these deep balls, but they've drawn PIs, and this will maybe just give them something to work through and film on Monday as they try and find. This is always the toughest pot spot that coaches relish in niche. You get a big-time win like this, so they get to go to the film with a fine-tooth comb and make sure you know about every little thing. Now, especially considering who the next opponent is. Connor, B buttons off a tackler. And works his way close to midfield. He gets six back. And that's a great point, Anisha, about why it's so important 
to rep this the way they are out here, to keep running their offense, because they know overwhelming with volume, the sheer number of plays is the way you have a chance of gassing a defense like Alabama, who this isn't the last couple of years Alabama. Nick Saban has got a defense back that he is used to in Tuscaloosa, especially in that linebacker room. On third and long, he had Mingo open, and he'll throw it away, and a flag at the end of the play. Jeffrey Johnson applying the pressure. And Corral taking a couple of hits on this drive, which leads you to believe uh, he may have the rest of the night off. Holding offense. That penalty has declined. Goes off the play. Fourth down. Ole Miss has yet to punt tonight, and Mac Brown, the punter, probably saying, "Is it? Is it my turn yet?" Lane Kiffin plays offense in real life the way your worst friend plays offense in Madden. No <laughs> kicks, no punts, all gas, no breaks. By the way, that was me. That's how I play in Madden. Sorry, Pat McAfee. First punt for Brown, just his fifth of the season here in week three. Good kick by the senior from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, but it rolls into the end zone for a touchback. Monday night football week two. We go to the not yet frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. Aaron Rodgers in the pack. Jared Goff and the Lions. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN 2. Monday Night Football with Peyton and Eli, and there has been some buzz. Lane Kiffin kind of started it, saying when Ole Miss goes to Knoxville and plays Tennessee next month, Peyton, the former volunteer, Eli, a former rebel, can we maybe have those two calling the game? I'm telling you, easy marketing opportunities, too Manning, too furious. You get them up there <laughs> and let them run through. The natural chemistry amongst brothers, you saw it on display in the first Monday night game that they were a part of here, you turn it loose on their alma maters, because I guarantee that is cutthroat at Thanksgiving with those families, especially with those two. And when their alma maters are playing, I mean, we get fighting words on TV. Almost still flying to the ball here, despite having a 40-point lead. Less than two minutes to go in the third. 624 yards of offense for the Rebels. Really, Tulane from the get-go, it was clear they just did not have an answer for this offense. And offensively, just some missed opportunities early. And when you know offensively that, hey, the defense isn't stopping the other team, you saw a team that was on tilt at times. Pratt finds an escape route, flag down, might be coming back. going to be sincere Hainsworth holding offense number 52 10 yard penalty third down now, Tulane's a team once we get into conference play in the American I'll be curious to see what they've learned here from the first three weeks not just the opponents Oklahoma Ole Miss but as we pointed out a few times in the broadcast now having to leave home because of Hurricane Ida spending three weeks in Birmingham one of the things Willie Fritz the head coach told us Hey, the culture of this program really rose to the surface, given all they had to deal with. When you've got guys like Michael Pratt leading the charge, they called him a servant leader. When you set that kind of standard for your locker room, we got to tie him out for Ole Miss here. Ole Miss. First when you've got that kind of standard half. inside this your locker room in these adverse out. situations, it bonds you closer. Going on the road to me was always like being in a bunker with your guys here. It made you kind of a little more aware of everything that you were doing in a given day. You go back to the end of August, on the 28th, Tulane had the last practice of fall camp. And with the storm approaching, the team decided to evacuate New Orleans and stay in Birmingham. August 29th, Hurricane Ida makes landfall as a Category 4 storm. 150 mile per hour winds, a million plus in Louisiana left without power. And Tulane student athletes, not just the football players, student athletes from multiple sports take residence at a recently renovated Sheraton Hotel in downtown Birmingham. Hotel was not yet open to the public, so they had it all to themselves, but 
they didn't have certain things like an ice machine. So the athletic trainers had to go outside and go bring in ice. The football team used Alabama's practice fields. They played Morgan State at Legion Field last week as Pratt is taken down from behind. The silver lining for Tulane. They get to go back home for the first time in three weeks tomorrow. They get out of their vagabond shoes and they will play UAB in New Orleans next weekend. It's a stiff test for them too. It's a good UAB outfit. Bill Clark and the Blazers, certainly a team they're gonna have to turn around, get on to the next play quickly for after this game. Right to punt, Plumley waits at the 42. Fair catch made at his own 36. That's the end of the third quarter. And that brings Time us out. to the end of quarter number three. It has been a tour de force offensively for Matt Corral and Ole Miss. It's done for Matt Corral and everything about his play tonight spoke in the imperative well earned for the work that he has put into the craft here. Every level of the field covered, every receiver involved here. Matt Corral is seeing the game at an elite level right now. And after we talk to him, it's because he spends the time early in the week. He has made this his craft, and he mastered it on a big stage tonight. The handoff to Snoop Connor, the new quarterback, is Kincaid Dent. And the numbers for Corral tonight. 335 yards passing, three touchdowns through the air, four on the ground. One of two FBS players with three passing and four rushing touchdowns in a game. Colin Klein did it last for Kansas State. And Anish, we talked about the mental clarity for him, what this means. Because when you look at this offense with the pitches, with the run pass options, it all requires to make the quarterback operate not only taking in a lot of information before the snap after the snap but then doing it at the breakneck speed that they want to play at here they put all that on his plate because he's in the building sunday monday tuesday wednesday going over the mental reps with jeff levy in this offense going through all of these things so like taylor brought up earlier he can visualize every play and the decisions he's got to make on that play as soon as he hears it calls it's instant recall because that's what this offense demands and we'll get a delay of game on Ole Miss unless they got a timeout. They did get a timeout. Lane Kiffin told us that first game, Labor Day, against Louisville, Kiffin could not be there in person. Timeout. He had a positive COVID test. First and he said he got an appreciation for how fast Matt Corral had to process in his offense. Backup quarterback Kincaid Dent, the sophomore from Yazoo City, Mississippi, taking over for this series. Had his first pass attempt of his college career last week against Austin P in a blowout. All right, Anish, I know you're itching. Okay. What can you tell me about Yazoo City? Ye named after the uh, Yazoo River, and uh, I believe the French explorer LaSalle named the Yazoo River. I checked his board. That is not in his notes. That is straight from his brain. Dent rolling to his right. And incomplete. Plumley the closest receiver. I know that because Memphis had a player the last couple of years, Kenneth Gainwell, who is uh, also from Yazoo City. Got a bit of a briefing on the history of Yazoo City, Mississippi then. Ever the historian, Anish Shroff, ladies and gentlemen. Take a bow. I, I've got a living, walking, breathing bachelor in paradise historian next to me, too, so don't, don't shortchange yourself. Well, I mean, they were playing Little John in the stadium before, and I just wanted to remind you that if you didn't watch Bachelor in Paradise last week, he was a guest host. I did not watch it, but thank you. Brown's punt. Dies inside the five. So only two punts today for Mac Brown making the most of his opportunity. Taylor. 
Well, guys, the two quarterbacks playing in this game, or who started this game, I should say, Matt Corral and Michael Pratt, got to know each other as they both were at the Manning Passing Academy. They loved spending time with the Mannings, of course, picking their brains, but they also liked getting to know each other. And Michael Pratt told me he learned a lot from Matt Corral, and they talked about this game. They said they were both excited because they knew the high-potent offenses that they both were. They said there's going to be a lot of points scored, and they were not wrong. When we were talking to Willie Fritz, he also mentioned he heard down at that camp that Michael Pratt was one of the guys when it rained out down there, when the campers were driven inside. It was him and uh, excuse me, Iowa State quarterback Brock Purdy who kind of saved the day. They were able to entertain all the kids inside there. And he said that just really spoke volumes about the kind of young man that Michael Pratt is, his ability to take on that situation and make the best of it. Now his uniform tells the story. Uh, I mean, uh, listen, long day for Tulane, but you saw that in the Oklahoma game. Didn't play much last week in the blowout against Morgan State on the sidelines now with Justin Ibietta in as Brumfield gets the call after a first down run. Ibietta, a freshman from Louisiana, athletic family. His sister plays volleyball at Tulane. Dad played baseball at Tulane. And mom played in the SEC, a volleyball player at LSU. Strong genes there, and you saw Ibietta get a lot of great action against Morgan State last week, a yep. big blowout win. 69 points in that game you mentioned, the most in the Willie Fritz era at Tulane, and plenty of great work for a guy they have a lot of hope for in the future. Big kids, 6'5", 230, a lot to work with, and a great guy to learn from behind Michael Pratt. There we go, Rob. Brumfield gobbled up after a yard, maybe two, third down. Last week, 13 out of 21, two touchdowns, a couple of picks, had a rushing TD as well. Did get a little nicked up, and uh, he was a question mark for today, but clearly healthy enough to play. It's a great opportunity to get reps on the road against a quality opponent here. We know it's backups in for both sides, but it's all reps throughout the season. And as you mentioned, when they get to conference play, when you're looking at the rest of the American, you want to bankroll all these. Every team goes into the season wanting to play their best football in November, and you take all of these little instances and you bring them back home with you after a long road trip. Punt team comes out on fourth down. Now, there was a stat that I saw earlier today. Something like 18 teams already that were ranked had lost in the first three weeks, most ever. And that number may have changed, may have gone up. What has that told you about this season? that some of the turnover we've seen, especially at quarterback, some of the stars of the last few years, the Justin Fields, the Trevor Lawrence of the world that have departed for the NFL, go back another year to Joe Burrow, have finally, maybe, brought some of these top teams back down to a spot that makes them vulnerable, makes this college football season very interesting going forward. Ole Miss has an interesting game in two weeks after the bye. We'll talk Rebels and the Tide when we come back. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Sonos. Experience game-changing sound made easy. Lane Kiffin goes up against his old boss in a couple of weeks. The Rebels have a bye off of this game and then visit Tuscaloosa to take on Alabama. They played last year. The Tide won 63-48. That's the SEC these days. New quarterback for Ole Miss, John Rice Plumley. Bad snap, and he loses about three. Noah Seiden with the stop. So, and there's your quarterback comparison for that game in two weeks. Now the numbers for Matt Corral, boy, almost 1,000 yards in three weeks couple games hasn't even had to play the whole game 14 TDs biggest thing zero interceptions yeah both of these guys take tremendous care of the football that was actually the source of Lane Kiffin's imitation of his old boss with the rat poison tweet when the folks at pro football po focus pointed out the number of pass attempts without an interceptable pass by their definition there Lane Kiffin understands what he's up against but both of these quarterbacks performing well Bryce Young Got all the benefit of working behind one of the best offensive lines in college football. Ample protection certainly been afforded to him early on.
Heisman favorites and Matt Corral moving up the list from 20 to 1 to 6 to 1. He plays well in Tuscaloosa. He'll be at the top of that list. Yeah, Nish, I think for Bryce Young, you just look at all the weapons he's got around there. It's the usual problem you run into at a place like Alabama where Devonta Smith wins the Heisman last year in a season where Mac Jones is playing out of his mind at quarterback because there's such an embarrassment of riches there. For Matt Corral, he's got great weapons yeah. here, but there's no question he's the one directing traffic. He's the one elevating the rest of this group. You look at that game, and if last year was any indication, if Ole Miss is going to go into Tuscaloosa and get a statement win against Alabama, I don't think it's on Matt Corral. I don't think it's on this offense. They scored 48 last year, gave up 63. Bryce Bohannon spun down after a 56-yard punt. 8.45 to go in regulation. Still a 40-point game. ESPN presented by Sonos. Ole Miss leads by 40 here in the fourth quarter in Oxford. And one of the things you love about Matt Corral, he might be out of the game right now, but he does not stop coaching up his teammates, staying involved in the game and staying involved with all members of the Ole Miss football family. That is Knox Kiffin right next to him, who's in town from Manhattan Beach. He has been having a lot of fun down here on the sidelines, guys. I've been watching him warm up with some of the quarterbacks, fit, mimic all they're doing. You can tell he's taken in every single moment of this. He was sitting next to Matt Corral. He is now engaged with Luke Altmaier, the freshman quarterback. Walked into the stadium tonight wearing the Elijah Moore Jets jersey right. as an homage to the recently drafted wide receiver out of Ole Miss who put up some of those video games number last. Kid understands the moment here. He's been coached up well by dad on that one to understand when the cameras are going to be on him and to be ready. Second and one here for Tulane. Ibietta in there at quarterback. Green Wave moved the sticks. Throwback unis for the Green Wave tonight. They've got Greeny, the old mascot on the helmet. Tulane once a charter member of the SEC. They won three SEC championships, which is more than Mississippi State, more than Kentucky, more than South Carolina, Vanderbilt, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas A&M. The helmet's telling a great story tonight here, an understanding of the moment here, and something fun for everyone to latch on to. I mean, Tulane's always going to lead the league in some of the best unis in college football. But sprinkling this one here that you might have seen on a home field t-shirt from time to time, you're shameless. Brumfield gets the call. It is almost 1 a.m. on the East Coast. If you're wondering, why are we still here? Why is this game still on? Sports Center follows. We were delayed at the start due to weather, lightning in the area. So the start of this game delayed about an hour and 45 minutes. And that third cup of coffee from Big Bad Breakfast today, Clutch. Whew, let me tell you. If you're looking for a little boost, they've got you there. They'll give you the highs and the lows there because Lord knows the breakfast crumble <laughs> sitting heavy in my stomach. I got to be honest. I have never seen a human being devour food as quickly as you. There's Brumfield. And he is devoured in the backfield third down. Anish, you were flat out disgusted with me. No, as I you wasn't disgusting. I, I was I was shocked I, listen I, I admit it I'm, I'm a bit of a slow eater I like to savor and, and and there was no subtlety there was no subtlety there was no subtlety to to, to your method I mean you just said hey like you thought there were three people at the table and, and we're gonna come and, and take your food nobody was taking your food you're the biggest guy I, on this team I've heard that line before a thousand times here I recognize I'm subtle as a sledgehammer <laughs> Anish you don't get to 300 pounds without a little bit of extra want to there. Gaining weight was a little tougher for me. Oh. And so I had to pack the calories in before my stomach knew what was up here. It's eating 101. All right, so give people your uh, go-to for food here in Oxford. First trip down, and 
Um, you, you found maybe a unique go-to down here in Mississippi the last couple of weeks. We were at Starkville the week before. I got to give a shout out to my friend Alex McDaniel. Got me all the way hooked up, proud Ole Miss alum. And let me know, the gas station chicken is where you want to live. Chicken on a, a stick from either of the gas stations flanking campus here was remarkable, Anish. Between that and the Oxford Creamery, I went, I went dessert for dinner last night and then got the gas station chicken after the fact. Uh, well, we were all watching Louisville and UCF last night. Mike Golick Jr. was eating chicken on a stick. Four, right? You had four? I regret nothing. Nothing, Anish. Sixty-one twenty-one. Ole Miss has put up 635 yards of total offense. And he's Shroff, Mike Golick Jr., Taylor McGregor with you. Saturday night turned Sunday evening, or Sunday morning. Feels like we've been here till Sunday evening. Time is a flat circle, Anish. Kentrell Bullock gets the call. College football rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. The top 10 teams all taking care of business, but drop down to number six, Clemson. Uh, offensively, what's going on? I think they've really seen the struggle. We've talked about certainly the departure of Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne, but I think the biggest thing with DJ Uyunglele is you don't have a run threat at quarterback for the first time in a while at Clemson. And their offensive line has never been a unit that's the strength of their team. Having that run option, we've seen it tonight with Matt Corral, is such a huge boost to this team. And so for DJ, that's been a tough adjustment. Go to the top line, Alabama. Got a scare against Florida. Held on for a 31-29 win. Is that good for college football that Alabama showed a sign of being vulnerable? Oklahoma's looked vulnerable through the first three weeks. Clemson's got a loss. Ohio State's got a loss. I think of Leonidas and the Mighty 300. If you can make the God King bleed, everyone else kind of sees. All right, maybe this warrior elite class of college football that we've looked at for so often and said, in any given year, do we even have four teams that can compete at the highest level at the playoffs? The blowouts we had in the first round here. The turnover at quarterback finally catching up with some of the powers at bay. Alabama as Xerxes. I like it. A lot of gold down there. A Seen a gold. lot of gold trophies. Third down, Kincaid Dent, the QB. Back to Bullock, stiff arm. Gonna be close to the line to gain, a little shy, fourth down. Offense looks like it'll stay out on the field. We talked about this earlier when Ole Miss went for it on fourth down. This is more about who they are. Well, we just mentioned on a night where they set a school record with 38 first downs. How do you get there? Tonight was an outlier in their third down performance. It's a willingness to be aggressive. And that's an attitude, Anish, that you're teaching in camp. That's in the offseason. That's in spring football where we understand this is how we're going to operate all the time. And you've got to be in the condition to do that. Now, you could say, hey, you got a 40-point lead. The game's over. Why not punt? You ask Lane Kiffin, I guarantee you, he'll tell you, as Dent. Busts a big run, still going, and pinballs his way inside the 30-yard line. Lane Kiffin's going to tell you, hey, we got our second string in there. We're going to run the same offense. This is now part of the DNA of the program. Invaluable reps for these guys and an opportunity. You're playing in front of a home crowd. You're going to get into SEC play soon and not see as many of these guys. And Kincaid gets to throw off, throw off a little bit of the B button like you talked about earlier. Bullock, and it dropped in the backfield. Storylines from this Saturday. We had the big game, the whiteout in State College, Penn State knocking off Auburn, Alabama. 30 plus points now in 29 straight. Oklahoma, Clemson, Cincy, and Penn State all had close calls and a historic day for the Ohio State freshman, Travion Henderson. Big day for Big Ten running backs overall. How about Kenneth Walker, the transfer that landed with Mel Tucker and the boys in Sparty, running all over Miami earlier today. It was a, been a brutal start to the season for the ACC. Pac-12 has had some hiccups as well. They do have the Oregon win over Ohio State. UCLA did beat LSU last check. UCLA was in a tight one with Fresno State, however. 
It's so interesting, Anish, we talked about what a variable season it's been up top. In a year where we thought that wasn't going to be the case, you had an offseason back full after a year with COVID-19 last season. There's Plumlee. John Rice Plumlee, converted quarterback, played wide receiver in the bowl game last year. That was a one-off at the time. Had a conversation with Lane Kiffin and the coaching staff right before fall camp, and they moved him permanently to wide receiver. And all of a sudden, with Lane Kiffin and his ability to diagram plays, he's got some trick ones that he's going to save for Plumlee later this season as Bullock takes it inside the 10. 700-plus yards of total offense for the Rebels now. You mentioned he's probably got a few in his pocket, maybe, that we'll see in Tuscaloosa coming up here pretty soon. Oh, if you're going to save him, it's for Saban. Just to put a bow on that earlier point, Anish, too. You've got the super seniors this year. You've got all this experience coming back in time. We didn't think we'd see the teams at the top falter the way they have. Now for the folks out there who have complained, hey, it's too top-heavy. It's the same teams every year. Maybe this is an early hint that we could be playing a little college football Jenga with the usual suspects. Certainly, and it's also a reminder, it's a long season. We're in week three. Bryce Young, Spencer Rattler, still a younger quarterback, especially than we're used to seeing in Norman. Some of these things take time. C.J. Stroud at Ohio State in a similar position, so we could expect to see their best football still upcoming here as these guys are learning, but they're learning in quite a crucible at the start of this season. That does it here in Oxford. 700 plus yards of total offense for Ole Miss. The 17th ranked Rebels cruise to a 61-21 win. They get a week off and then take their Heisman hopeful quarterback to Tuscaloosa to take on number one Bama. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the Southeastern Conference.